Hello, fellow translators. Okay, today I want to talk to you about a uh, well about something that came across my radar because of a comment uh, left by uh, Yoni's Boozy. He left a comment on one of my videos talking about marketing for translators and tra or basically translators with an online presence. When translators have an online presence, very often they're they're always just marketing themselves, and uh, you'll see this on social media or on blogs or anything like that, and. They're always trying to uh, market what they can offer, market their words, market their language uh, combination and stuff like that. And, and I see this a lot. I've seen this in uh, newsletters. I've seen this in blogs and I've seen this a lot in social media. And I think it's very counterproductive. So here I just wanted to talk to you about what I think is a good solution for this. And in doing so, I wanted to use a parallel that I've seen in my uh, city that I'm in right now. Right now I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, which has tremendous growth. It, I think it's in the top three uh, growing cities in the U.S. right now. And it's the second financial center of the U.S. right now with a bunch of banks. In fact, uh, Bank of America is already here and Wells Fargo has a big thing and uh, BB&T and SunTrust just merged and they're going to have their headquarters here. Anyway, a lot of growth happening here. So whenever I go to these networking events, um, obviously there are a lot of people in finance, but what you see a lot of, probably more, is people in real estate because real estate's blowing up here. To buy, to rent, or anything, they have buildings going up all over the place. So you always see people in real estate, and so I get a lot of exposure to these people in real estate. And usually I meet them at these events and I say, hello, how are you doing? Okay. Because as a translator, I, actually I have, I have done some jobs with real estate agents, but uh, there, there's not too much overlap, let's say. So I'll talk to these people, and then many times, because we exchange business cards, I'll end up on their newsletter, I'll end up on their email blasts and stuff like that. And every single one of them I unsubscribe to. I have to delete and all that because they're always marketing themselves. They're always saying, oh, um, we, I can offer a discount for this. Uh, now's the best time to buy because you can offer this. Don't forget to check out my services here, blah, 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 blah. There's one exception. There's one real estate agent whose newsletter, he sends it, I think, monthly, and that one I not only I don't, didn't unsubscribe, but I actually read it when I receive it every month. I look forward to it, actually. I like reading it. And so I wanted to use him as, as an example as for what uh, we as translators can do because I think it's very interesting. Every single month when he sends an update, he talks about what's going on in terms of Charlotte real estate, but from the point of view that I would be interested in. So he's talking about when I see construction going here, he's like, oh yeah, that's going to be a new uh, shopping center, you know, or that's going to be um, you know, a whole bunch of new bars and restaurants are going to be opening up, or check out this area because it's going to have uh, a, a new brewery and it's going to be great, or stuff like that, or be careful about this area because there's going to be construction going on for the next two months. And as someone who lives in this city, I find it very interesting because a lot of change is going on in this city right now and his newsletter keeps me up with this change and uh, lets me know what to expect and what's happening. So I know that the new Publix is opening here. They're going to have a new hotel opening up there and it's, it's very interesting. And he does this by obviously by scouring all the real estate news that's happening and also by literally walking around and in these newsletters he'll post his own pictures that he's taken of these places. And I find this very interesting and I'm subscribed to it and I still and I like to read it, as I mentioned. So that's great. What does that have to do with us? And uh, what can we do uh, about that? Well, I think there's several things we can do because as translators, we tend to do kind of the same thing as these real estate agents are doing. We like to market what we can do and we can say, hey, if you need French to English translations, uh, feel free to let me know. Offering a discount on translations now. Uh, did you know that translators are really important? Uh, you know, uh, here, hire me. And uh, very often it's just marketing or it's a, va a thinly veiled attempt at, uh, at marketing, you know, just kind of thinly veiling it with something random about the news. Oh, Google Translate can mess your life up. Hire me. And uh, I think this is completely counterproductive. I don't think it'll work at all. And uh, the few times I've seen it, it's, you know, I'll unsubscribe to stuff like that, even if it has to do with translation, because I know I won't get anything out of it. So what's the solution? I think the solution is to do more like this one real estate agent that I follow and actually to provide something that these people reading it will be interested in. Now this will be different for all of you because all of you are dealing with different languages and you're dealing in different industries and specialties. 
So if you're doing, say, a blog or a newsletter or, you know, you have a social media presence that you want other people to follow, uh, then the important thing is to make sure that they can follow it. That is something they want to follow. So if I were to send out a newsletter, not, I'm, I'm not doing this. I don't have a newsletter out and uh, I don't have email blasts or anything along those lines. But um, I think a good idea for a newsletter to send out would be to... Well, actually, a, a good way to start it off would be to have one of those jokes. You see all these jokes, you see all these cartoons, you see all these pictures that people have taken of uh, mistranslations or of mistakes with Google Translate. You, you see it very often in menus or in signposts that have been written out incorrectly or stuff like that. And in fact, we have a Facebook page now, uh, Success: How to Be a Successful Freelance Translator, I think it's called. If you go on Facebook and search for it, you'll find it. I think now it's mostly those funny pictures because they're just all over the place and they're funny so we just post them and uh, so by we I mean my sister she does pretty much all the posting on that on that page by the way if you can start it off with something like that because everyone you know that's always enjoyable and it's kind of like a cartoon or something that makes you laugh and then follow it along with stuff that can be useful if your specialty is in uh, I don't know say French to English and in the legal field then try to concentrate on that stuff you know maybe the EU has a bunch of new stuff in the legal field that people in the legal field need to keep track of, well, guess what? The people who are your prospective clients are in the legal field and they might be interested in that. Try to put yourself in their shoes and find something that they might be interested in, something that they want to keep abreast of, something that they want to keep up with. And so something like that could help. If you have something along the lines of, once again, yeah, EU regulation or regulation in general or uh, some new huge law firm has decided to do this or that, as long as it has something to do with language and, uh, and something to do with uh, the legal world, then it can work out well. And that's why I would recommend doing something. If you do a newsletter, make it like once a month. So it gives you time to collect stuff that's relevant and curate it in a way that works out and, uh, and try to make it work out for the people reading it. Obviously, if you're in social media, as stuff pops up, you can just show it. But make sure it's stuff that is relevant to the people. Marketing your wares and marketing what you have on offer is not very productive. You can have a link at the bottom of every newsletter that you send out or something along those lines, but what you, the main thing you want to do is keep top of mind. And if people receive your newsletter that they actually read every month and they know that you're on top of stuff and as a French to English translator in the legal field, you're on top of what's going on, guess what? Next time they need French to English translations or whatever it might be, they're going to get in touch with you. In fact, they'll get in touch with you probably with any, for any translation. Be like, look, we need uh, Spanish to English. Do you know anyone? Can you help out? Something along those lines. And uh, because they trust you and they know you keep up with what's going on. Obviously, this won't happen right away. It'll take time because you're trying to build up a relationship, but it's something to keep in mind that can work out much better than just sending out blasts and telling people, hey, I offer these translations. Don't forget about me. Hey, remember me? I'm still offering these translations, and uh, so hire me, And you know, which is pretty much just a waste of time. So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up, and, uh, and hopefully you can find that useful. Hopefully you can use that in some way. Um, because I think it could be a good idea if you are thinking of setting up a blog or a newsletter or anything along those lines. Um, once again, I don't have a blog, I don't have a newsletter, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm not going to be doing any of that stuff, but uh, I think there are, there are good ideas for those of you who wish to do something like that and you know who are willing to put in the regular work to keep doing it to actually provide value to these people because you provide value, then they'll appreciate it and you provide them with value ahead of time, then they'll come after you when they need a paid job or something along those lines. So uh, yeah, I hope you can find it useful. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, thanks. Bye. Savedum.